What is up guys, it's your boy Solam here, back with another World of Warcraft video for The War Within. Now today we are finally talking about enchanting treasures in The War Within, and I'll be showing you the locations of the enchanting treasures that I've found so far on the beta in The War Within. Now there's going to be two treasures in every single zone for enchanting, for a total of 8 treasures, and they all give you 3 knowledge points. That's going to be 24 knowledge points that you can spend in enchanting in whichever, whichever specialization point or talent, that you want to go into, and you will also get 120 Artisan Security. Now, in addition to that, the waypoints will be down below in the video description, so you can easily copy and paste those, and make macros to then get them as an arrow in your game, if you have the TomTom Tom add-on, for example. Basically, I'll be giving you the coordinates to these uh, treasures, and you can then copy and paste. That being said, I'm still going to show you exactly where they are as well, because I'm making this video before the game comes out, Based on the beta so you can now know exactly where they are, you know what to look for and you can follow along while looking at exactly what to look for. Either way, let's start. So treasure number one is going to be right here in the Boulder Springs. This is going to be treasure number one in the Isle of Dorn. So you move to exactly where my character is right now, right west of Boulder Springs or the S in Boulder Springs. Over here you are then looking for the Grinded Earthen Gem as you can see on my minimap and it's located right Right here on this table. Now, as you can see, this one study to increase your castle guard enchanting knowledge by three giving you 3 knowledge points or 15 acuity. After this, you will now start flying back to Dornogal, the capital city. In the capital city of Dornogal, in the Isle of Dorn, you will be located right here in the capital city itself, in the fisher area, kind of. So once again, you will go here and then look at your minimap, you will then see a silver Dornogal rod. The beautiful thing about the War Within is that as long as you have the professions, these treasures will be shown on your minimap. So even if you're off by a little bit, you will still be able to see where they are, assuming you're at the right altitude. Over here, you click on the rod, and there we go, that's going to be treasure number Number 2 out of 8. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, there will be two in every single zone, which means that we are done with the Isle of Dorn, and we have now move, uh, moved on to the Ringing Deeps. Now, as you enter the Ringing Deeps from the Isle of Dorn, you'll be entering from this gate right here, and the first treasure is directly northeast of that gate. So exactly where I'm standing now, you will then have uh, this one right here, the suit coated orb. You just loot that orb, and there we go. That's going to be enchanting treasure number three, or the first one of the Ringing Deeps. For the next one, you want to just start flying all the way down to Taylock, which is this area right here, which at the moment we have not discovered because I picked up all these professions or all these treasures on my main enchanter, so I just want to make a brand new character to show you me picking up the treasures as well. Now, for the next treasure, you want to move all the way down to Taylock, as I just said, and it's going to be located right here in this kind of uh, crater, canyon, whatever, and you're looking for the animated enchanting dust inside this building. That's going to be on this table, you just loot that right there, and I'm just going to give this disclaimer right now, there's going to be three mobs inside here, it just depends on when you go here basically, if there will be people here clearing those out. If not, they could be difficult to deal with, because after they die, they sometimes give off a tainted fragment which keeps damaging you after they die. So even though there's only 3 mobs, it could turn into 10 mobs and then it becomes very dangerous. So depending on your gear, this could be a place where you want to be cautious. Either way, that's treasure number 4 done, we're now halfway done, and you want to start flying towards Hallowfall. Alright, so for the first treasure in Hallowfall, aka treasure number 5 in general, you just want to go directly to this flight path that the lights read out, and over here you will have a house, or a building, or a house. You go into that, and once again on the minimap right here, you can see the essence of Holy Fire. That's on this crater right here, you loot that one, and there you go, that's treasure number 5. Now the thing is, the next one in Hallowfall is going to be super close, so looking at my map right now, you want to move northeast toward, towards the, um, towards the farm where herbalists will plant their seeds. 
to uh, get more herbs. So you want to move towards that farm, and you will find the next one inside a house on that farm. So going into here, we can then go into uh, one of these two houses. It should be here. So over here, you enter this house. Just to show you exactly where I am on the map right now, we are at the farm at this small house. Going inside this house, you will automatically see it's like a lab slash enchanting area. And there's a book over here. You look to your right, and you will have this scroll, the Enchanted Rothy Scroll. That's going to be treasure number two from Hallowfall. Number six in general, we now only have two more to go. So following along, you should have six treasures now, and there's two more to grab, and they're both in Oshka Head. So just start moving your way to Oshka Head. There's an entrance right here where you can fly through, or you can grab a flight path. So the penultimate treasure for enchanting, AK number 7, you will travel to in the Weaver's Lair, the capital city of Ashkahet, right here, so you will see this kind of mark on your map. Alternatively, take the flight path if you have that one, and then just go directly north of the flight path. Over here, looking at your minimap, you have something called a Void Shard, that you'll be looting right here. So there we go, that's the Void Shard. That is going to be treasure number 7. At this point, we only have one more to grab, so I will see you at that one. Now for the last enchanting treasure, you want to move all the way down to the City of Threads in Oshkahet. This is basically the profession place. In um, in this zone in general, you have a brand new city where you want to get some reputation with these guys to make them friendly and not hostile. Either way, it's going to be located right here in the Umbral Bazaar. And if you go to where I am right now, kind of a safe spot in the city itself, you will see the treasure right northwest of me on the minimap. This is going to be the Book of Dark Magic. Now you just want to move in, be a little bit careful here if you don't have the reputation like me, personally I don't. So just be aware of these guards, because if they see you, they will try to cast something on you. And when that gets to 10 stacks, that will teleport you out. So even if you don't have the rep reputation, that's not a problem. Like these mobs are super easy to deal with, it's only the, castable, uh, the, the cast they do. When that gets to 10 stacks, it will literally teleport you out. So be very careful of that and try and not to get teleported out, and that's usually done by the elite. So just send your mob on the elite or have a stun ready to go, or something like that. Either way, the point that I'm trying to make here is that even if you haven't done this yet, if you're not at this point in the campaign, it's not a problem. The mobs being hostile is not a problem. There's only a couple of guards anyway, and you can grab every single profession treasure as I have shown you across these videos. Even though I am personally hostile yet, haven't done the campaign for them, we have been able to grab every single one. Either way, if you have been following along, then now you should have 8 treasures to um, spend when it comes to enchanting, that all of them will give you 3 knowledge points and 15 acuity. In total, that will be 120 artisan's acuity and 24 knowledge points for enchanting, and the acuity, for example, you can then further spend to get yourself some enchanting tools or even enchanting accessories, because crafting these at a high quality will require acuity. Like, for example, going down to professional equipment, we can take a look at some of them right here and why you want to have acuity in general. So, going down to um, rods and wands. Actually, not rods and wands. So for example, we have the Ruined Iron Claw Rod that you can make. This one will cost you 350 Artisan's Acuity, which you don't have that yet. You will have to do even more activities to get more Acuity, but so far you have 120 extra that you wouldn't have if you didn't grab these treasures. And you also have this one, the Ruined Null Stone Rod, which is even better and you use 1% less concentration when concentrating on enchanting recipes. This one is 400 acuity as well, so you will need a bunch of acuity when it comes to making your profession tools. Now if you're wondering about where to spend your specialization points or knowledge points that you just picked up from these treasures, check out my War Within Gold Making Guide where I go more in depth into every single profession and my examples of how to spend your knowledge points to maximize your gold making in every single profession. Either way, that's the video for today, so hopefully this was helpful to you and hopefully by now you have gathered all the treasures. Either way, Thank you for watching, share it with somebody else who has enchanting as well to help them get the treasures they need, and uh, thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it. I will see you again in the next video very soon.